And welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's having a great day as always. And as you can tell by this upload, we're gonna be taking a look at the Springfield Armory 4.25 double stack. Uh, they do not call this the 2011, but for the sake of the video, I will be calling it both. <laughs> Uh, I'm very excited to give you guys this upload. So we're going to be doing an unboxing. We're also going to be shooting this to get a first mag impressions as well. Uh, we'll be going to my favorite range, which is Del Marva. Um, awesome range. If you've seen my previous uploads, you know that's where I mainly shoot at. And also, for anybody that's new to this channel, uh, my name is Jeff. And this is where I share my personal passions with you guys. Uh, in this case, we're talking about firearms. I have a passion for horology. This is a GMT Master II Pepsi on a Jubilee. I also have a 2023 C8 70th Anniversary Special Edition Corvette as well. So, I say that to say this. Go through the channel and check them out if you're interested in any of my watches or that particular car. But today, we're going to be talking about the Springfield. So, I'm pretty excited about this. So, let's dive into this unboxing. Uh, let's see what Springfield offers uh, with this pistol variant. And then, we're going to uh, discuss the uh, platform in itself. I'm going to give you my first impressions and also my first impressions of shooting this pistol. So without further ado, let's take a look. So taking a close look at this unboxing, it's going to be a hard case for your Springfield Armory uh, Prodigy. And of course, it's going to have its logos as such. And this is going to follow suit throughout the rest of the unboxing. Uh, it's going to come with a soft case. I do like these soft cases that come with these pistols. Uh, guys, let me know what you think as far as these. Um, I don't mind this at all. Of course, it's going to have its proprietary logo as well. We'll dive a little bit further into this uh, as we move forward. And one of my favorite things that I love that they do is provide verbiage with the American flag. And if you guys aren't familiar with unboxings, there's a lot of things in here that are pretty common. You're gonna have stickers. If you wanna be that person that puts stickers all over the rifle case, I have been that guy. I've been that guy, I've been that guy. But it's pretty cool. I, 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 do, I do love the uh, stickers. And of course, with the American flag, I think that's pretty awesome. It's also gonna come with standard lock. And of course, it's going to have their logo as well. I use these locks all the time with my rifle cases. Uh, you can never go wrong with having too many locks. So that's just something I really do appreciate. And of course, it's gonna come with the tools if you decide to install the plate for your RMR, which we'll talk about in a little bit. If you decide to go with an RMR, um, it's got a little bit of weight to it. This feels, this feels pretty good, it feels pretty good. Standard information you guys should read uh, as far as the caution or warnings of this particular firearm. Highly recommend it. Standard mailing information. And again, they're following suit with the DS for double stack. They're not calling this a 2011. Um, I'm going to call it kind of both, right? So again, this is going to be your SOP, which will go over your firearm in detail as far as cleaning, any kind of maintenance or field stripping. Um, anything you want to know about your particular firearm, it should be in here. So. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you read these. Uh, it is very important. And of course, all your literature will come in this wonderful double stack 1911 envelope as well. And I don't think, whoa, there's one more thing in here. What do we have? There you go. If you want to activate your warranty, get online right there. And as expected, your Springfield Armory Prodigy uh, 4.25 will be here. And before we move any further, we'll do a safety check and make sure everything is clear and the firearm is clear. Uh, this is going to come with steel mags. You're gonna have an extended mag and a standard mag, and it'll have the logo on both of them. Now, a lot of people are asking, are these compatible uh, with the Staccato uh, platforms? I don't know for sure. I've heard a little bit of both. Um, I do not have a Staccato, uh, though I do plan on getting one soon. So a lot of people are comparing this gun to that to a certain extent. I can't speak a whole lot on that because I've not compared these side by side, though I have shot both of them. So these will be your standard mags that come with this. And if you want to use uh, this case in any way, shape or form as far as carrying, you have an option to have your pistol as such. And then you can put a mag inside here, keep it and lock it up. So if this is something you want to store inside your house uh, in a safe way, of course, and um, you want to keep one mag loaded and one inside a pistol. And of course, you know, according to your laws, this is one option that you may have. Having said that, let's dive further in to this pistol and uh, let's see what this is all about. Is it worth the hype? Is it worth the hype? If you guys have any experience with the Prodigy, let me know what you think. 
uh, especially the uh, full size compared to the 4.25. Starting things off with the front assembly, you do have front and rear serrations. One thing I do appreciate is the size of these front serrations. They feel very aggressive, very easy to use, but dare I say not too aggressive. Now I know that's a very big debate as far as doing press checks. Obviously I don't mind and it's not gonna be a debate I wish to have here on the channel, but if you choose to do a front press check, and it's just so easy. Great job on the front serrations. Uh, working our way to the front optic. As you can tell, this is gonna be in a green fiber optic and the rear is serrated and blacked out, which makes me pick up, at least my eyesight, picks up that green very, very well. Absolutely love that. And of course, these are gonna be tall sights should you wanna use a red dot or an armoire of some sort. And again, we discussed that earlier, but this does come with an option for a plate carrier, right? So, <laughs> right, a plate carrier. Come on guys, I got that wrong, obviously. But this is going to be installed uh, for your armoire if you choose to use it. And uh, what I like about this is it incorporates your rear sight into the plate. I think this is a genius move on uh, Springfield's uh, part. And it keeps uh, file suit with it being uh, serrated and blacked out. So guys, if that's something you choose to do, um, I think you're gonna enjoy it. I can't speak a whole lot on it because I have not used it yet. But following to the rear of the pistol, I love how they have the rear trigger skeletonized. And of course, this is going to be a ambi safety for front and rear as well. And it's very tactile. You're gonna know. You're absolutely gonna know if you're on safety. Now, I have seen some other prodigies uh, on the um, on reviews where some of the quality was skeptical, right? I can't say that for this pistol, right? Everything feels very, very solid. It's not loose at all. The back, as far as your extra safety, of course, this has to be engaged for you to pull the trigger. This is not loose. This is very sturdy. The quality of this pistol feels very, very well. Um, you know, a lot of people are comparing this to Cicados. This is not a match build. Uh, this is a production build. So comparing this to Cicado and that aspect, um, I just wouldn't. Now I can't speak a whole lot because I don't have a Cicado here, but I have shot them and there is a difference as far as the feel. Now this is about 35 ounces. Um, if you choose to carry this, it's gonna be up to you. It will be a similar size to a, say Glock 45. I would not carry something this heavy. As far as home defense, my only knock is going to be, I don't have tritium in the rear. I like to be able to see my gun at night should I have to grab it off the nightstand for home defense. But I mean, shooting this gun so far, I was amazed about how well this gun shot. Working our way to the barrel, this is gonna be in stainless and it is a competition style bull barrel. What does that mean to the average shooter? I'm gonna probably go with a whole lot of nothing. I don't think you're gonna notice a difference as far as, as a new shooter, as far as how accurate this barrel is or how long it's gonna last. I highly doubt you're gonna shoot 15, 20,000 rounds to your pistol throughout its lifetime. Now, for somebody who shoots a lot or maybe competes, my guess is you'll probably notice. I noticed immediately picking up this gun, how accurate it was uh, compared to my other pistols and how well it shot as far as it being flat. I was highly impressed uh, on this particular build. Now, we're working our way down to the lower of this is a polymer. This is not a full steel. Obviously, if it was, it'd be more expensive and it would also be a lot heavier. You do have an option for a light if you choose to use that. And of course, your trigger guard is skeletonized to a certain extent, allowing your finger to get really high on that purchase. Stunted beaver tail as well. But for me, I mean, it just feels so good in the hand. And obviously, shooting it felt good as well. I love getting my finger as high up as I possibly can on that cut and as high up on the beaver as well, right? Obviously you have to with this. Again, letter safety measure. You cannot engage this trigger without pulling or pushing that safety in the back and having your safety off as well. So if this is something you choose to use for say a Penix carry, uh, this is a great option. Aside from the weight, if you don't mind, um, obviously it's kind of big, so you might be a, you might want to be a, a, a bigger structure type person to be able to carry this as far as appendix. Uh, working our way to the trigger. 
The first thing that I noticed about this trigger is it is very crisp, very clean, though it's not extremely light, right? If you're looking at a single stage trigger, say the CZ um, Tactical Sport Green, totally different aspect, right? And compared to other 1911s that are out there, definitely not as light. Again, price point on this is going to depict that. But it doesn't mean it's not good. Now, what I did notice is the full size uh, 5 inch or 5.25, forgive me if I'm wrong, this is a lighter trigger than the full size. Uh, if you have a chance to compare them, which I did, and we did do a trigger pull on both of them, this is definitely lighter. So the trigger pull on this, and I'm just speaking off the top of my head, I believe it was right around that four and a half pound range, maybe even lighter, but it was lighter than the full size. So shooting this firearm so far, it's shot very well. Uh, we went to our favorite range, which is going to be Del Mar. If you follow this channel, you know that I shoot there an awful lot. And um, 400 rounds, not one single jam. This gun shot very well. Now, is that enough rounds to put through this gun? They call it uh, extremely reliable or something that I would use for home defense? Absolutely not. Um, if I get past 1,000 rounds or so, then it's possible I might use this for home defense. That kind of does bother me as far as it not being tritium. Um, but it's not a deal breaker on this particular gun. I have a feeling the way it's shooting so far, uh, this is going to be something that's going to stay in the collection for a while. Now, as far as the texture on the grip, uh, the texture is just enough. It's not too aggressive, at least for my hands. And it's not, it's just, to be honest with you, I would say it's perfect for me. I love how there is no texture here for your fingers. They did think about that. And the mag release, it's just big enough for my hands to, uh, to use that, right? Pretty easy. As far as the Magwell, it is slightly flared out. Does that matter to you? Uh, that's gonna depend on the shooter. Again, going back to this uh, barrel, um, well, this being a bull barrel and a competition style barrel and stainless, I really do believe this barrel is gonna last a very, very long time. So my overall first impressions while shooting this, I gotta say I was very impressed. Um, I do not plan on putting a RMR on this. So as far as using this plate, which again, I'm very impressed with how they design this plate. I wish more people or more companies would design their plates like this. Having that rear sight incorporated, there is not going to be any type of gap between your plate and your sight, obviously. But I, I don't plan on shooting with the uh, red dot on this. I have shot with red dots. I, I'm proficient with red dots, but I prefer... To stick with iron sights on this particular gun guys let me know what you think is your prodigy shooting pretty well at 4.25 are you going to be using a red dot or are you using a red dot and if you have the full size variant of this how is that shooting um from what i understand the mass on that gun as far as reciprocating as it's shooting i don't know i've heard mixed reviews right on depending on the type of ammo it looks like it's been uh it's been jamming a little ejection pattern has been kind of iffy haven't had that problem yet. I I'm shooting uh, standard brass on this, uh, 115 grain. I did shoot some 24 grain or 124 grain. I had no problems at all. But guys, I will keep you posted on how this is shooting uh, as the ownership continues as always. And uh, taking a look at some other options uh, in this case, something that we might be using down the road for a concealed carry. This is going to be the Canic SF. So this is about the same size as a Glock 19. Kinnick makes amazing triggers. Um, and I've stated this before, but this is what led me to, well, at least the TP9 SFX. And all these guns are cleared, by the way. This is what led me into uh, full size or 4.25s and uh, double stack type guns or any competition style guns at all. So I've worked my way to the SFX, um, TP9 SFX, and then to the, to the SF, and we'll see how this shoots. But if you're looking for something you want to conceal carry, that's something I'm thinking about currently. And obviously, if you look at these two right here, the size difference, I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different, right? These are the two completely different guns. Obviously, this is a lot smaller, a lot lighter, but can you conceal carry this? Sure. If you choose to, that's up to you. But guys, that's it for this review. I just want to give you my first impressions so far. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, is this worth the hype? Is it worth the money? Would you do it again? So far, as far as the purchase on this, yes, I, I would absolutely purchase this gun again. Again, it's kind of premature with only four heart rounds, but my first impression so far, I do really like this gun a lot. 
And uh, let me know what you guys think as far as this Kinnick uh, SF, if you had a chance to shoot this as well. And um, any holster recommendations as far as the Prodigy. I'm going to use a light if I do decide to uh, use this for home defense. So let me know if you got any holster recommendations with a light on this Prodigy. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you at the next review.